Hi, I'm Mike Murphy. I run a lab here in the Mitochondrial Biology Unit, which is run by the MRC here in Cambridge. And my lab looks at aspects of mitochondria that contribute to health and disease, particularly with interest in things for reactive oxygen species, which are produced as a byproduct of mitochondria. Their normal job really is to break down food and convert that energy into ATP so we can do the work that this keeps us held and keeps us alive. But this byproduct, reactive oxygen species, contributes to many different diseases and also possibly to intracellular signaling. So we are very curious about ways of measuring these things and also in understanding how they might contribute to pathology and to maybe normal biology as well. What's happened is the exciting aspects are really that mitochondria are turning out to be involved in all sorts of other things. So the core uh, ideas of how mitochondria work. There's been lots of sequential discoveries on the mechanism and on the structures involved and then on how mitochondria are assembled. So it's difficult to pick out one particular thing but the overall area I'd say that is most exciting is this idea that mitochondria are moving from being a small niche that just provides the energy to being involved in inflammation, cell death, how stem cells operate in cancer and metabolism as well, that the mitochondria now seem to be taking centre stage in so many aspects of mitochondria. So it's not one thing really, but it's a, an aspect of mitochondria that's spreading our understanding of the rest of the cell. What I felt that encouraged me to organise the meeting was this idea that the field is burgeoning and many people should be brought together to understand what's going on, particularly people from different disciplines. We're very keen to bring together people doing very advanced chemistry with people doing medical uh, interactions or clinicians to try and talk to each other where they might not normally meet to understand what they could do. That the chemists have these wonderful abilities to manipulate molecules and put that in a context where they can actually provide that to a biological or medical problem and bringing those together. So the highlight wasn't one particular thing because I felt all of the talks were very, very good. Uh, but what I felt was most, the biggest highlight really was the interactions and the future collaborations that will come from this. Because we think that mitochondria are central to a lot of exciting new areas in biology, we want to be able to intervene both to measure what's happening and to modify it for making drugs. So a key way we can do that is what's called chemical biology, which really just means using chemistry to get into the mitochondria and tweak or manipulate the small molecules there so that we can make probes that report on what's going on inside mitochondria, or new types of drugs that manipulate mitochondria, or ways that we can alter mitochondrial function both to find out what's going on and very importantly to make new types of therapies for the future. So that's what we mean by the chemical biology. There are a lot of molecules that we're interested in manipulating mitochondria with. One thing that my lab has been involved with and several other people who were at the meeting was, was designing molecules that go into mitochondria in vivo. And for this we use the voltage across the mitochondrial membrane that's negative inside. And it can, we can use that to target small molecules into mitochondria. So we've used that a lot to direct molecules to, pro to protect mitochondria from what's called oxidative damage that contributes, say, to heart attack and stroke where the mitochondria are central to producing damaging free radicals and we've got many drugs that block the radical production or block the effects of the radicals. So those sorts are some of the drugs that we're very interested in carrying forward. At the meeting, for example, Raman Kalyana Raman talked a lot about using this approach and extending it to cancer. There's a lot of interest in mitochondria and cancer because we know that mitochondrial metabolism changes dramatically in cancer. This was picked up by a guy called Warburg, Warburg many, many years ago, where we, in the 1920s, he discovered that cancer cells suddenly seem to become glycolytic. They're a bit like if you've been running too fast, your mitochondria can't keep up and you start producing lactic acid. Cancer cells seem to be like that. But what's surprising is the mitochondria aren't just turned off. They're sitting there poised to do things, but we don't know why. That suggests that if we can affect the mitochondria, then we have a way of attacking the cancer cell. Raman's work is very interesting because he was targeting a molecule called metformin, which is widely used as a therapy for diabetes. And it acts throughout the cell and perhaps in the mitochondria, but he modified it so it just went to mitochondria and had very interesting effects on some aspects of cancer metabolism, possibly through interacting with 
respiratory chain enzymes in mitochondria, but the details are a bit vague. So that's some of the approaches that going from a very simple idea that to protect the mitochondria, we can suddenly make a new type of drug for cancer cells. And I know there's a lot of interest now among companies trying to push that forward to see if mitochondria might be an interesting way to develop drugs for cancer. What we really want to know is how mitochondria operate in cells and in vivo. At the moment we can do a lot with isolated mitochondria, but now we really want to see how they operate in the cell. And then more importantly even than that is how they operate within a cell in vivo. So how is a mitochondria operating inside a heart as it's working normally or if it's being damaged or during a heart attack? How are mitochondria working during, in the brain during a stroke or during normal um, metabolism or during a neurodegenerative disease. It's those ideas of being able to intervene and understand what's happening in the mitochondria in vivo that's really going to be interesting. And that was one of the drivers for this meeting, to try and bring together people with skills in chemistry. Can we get new sorts of probes, new sorts of approaches to kind of get a read out of what mitochondria are doing in vivo on a minute by minute basis, which will enable us to design new types of drugs and new types of therapies. Now that's extremely challenging, but that's what I'd really would hope to be able to see, because trying to understand what's going on inside a body is quite challenging to do. Okay? We can do cells in culture, but that's quite different from what's happening in vivo. So an expansion of mitochondrial studies in vivo is what we really want to understand.